As the old Kedushim would say, I do. Rach Baruch. Simply I bow in the presence of Yah for another Yom, a day whereby He has caused the light of refreshment. Yoshua HaMashiach, the power of that Eruth, the testimony of strength to resonate in a profound fashion from my bosom that I am alive. He commands that everything that has the ruach, the breath, life that only comes from Yah, that we should berach, to bow, to honor him, and to do it with a great delight. So I have no complaints today. I'm full of the Esha, the riches of Yah's great counsel that corrects me in my fallacies and my own falsehoods. When I can perceive things about me that are so superficial uh, that even I cannot garner from my bosom the delight in your story, you know something is wrong with me. I find this a generation that is self-grandizing, self-indulgent, and it is one of the most prolific generations of hypocrisy. I say it, I will not stop saying it. I do not give a damn about your childlike emotions. And we do greet you, our friends, as well. And how you perceive the Torah of Yah and how you perceive me, I frankly don't give a damn. You must understand why I say that. Because in Yerushalayim, they destroyed the Nobi, the Navi'im. They killed the messengers. And this is a generation of the spirit of Laodicea that they want to bind the mouth of the messenger through their little impotent childlike emotions. And they literally think they care, but they don't give a damn about anyone. It is one thing. You will find the strength of any wise ach. The wise achutz. When you correct them they will love you there must be among Israel men that are spiritual and daughters that are spiritual to judge all things and they are not worrying about the indication or the response of your judgment at all we must have spiritual men men full of the ruach when they sought men like uh, to be leaders of the house of Yah, they were full of the Ruach. And they were men that feared Yah. And one of the first pronouncements unto Yisrael, Yah, you're stiff neck, you're stubborn, you're wicked, you're uncircumcised in your love, and you do always resist the Ruach Hodash. Wash me, Yah, correct me. I prefer Yah to correct me in his judgment. I've always said this all of my life. It makes no difference how one assesses me and judge me. Even when a fool judge me, it makes me pay attention to me. I don't reject it. That's what a wise individual does. When someone points something out to a wise man, he doesn't reject it. He doesn't esteem himself because he knows the fallacies of his own wickedness, his own damn corruption. And so one does not pine away and relegate themselves to a judgment. Judgment is the most beautiful thing. Even if you think you are strong in that area, you're not strong. And someone speaks to you about your wickedness. You ought to appreciate that. This is the wicked generation. It doesn't give a damn about each other. 
It doesn't give a damn about Ya Yoshua Hamashi. Ya is a generation without compassion. But everyone thinks that he or she has compassion. You will know you have a great love for Yisrael when you're willing to lay down you to die. To die. No greater love than this that a man will lay down his life for his a hyphen a h for a friend no greater love than that and we are a generation because we have not learned love we don't know what love is and i'm not afraid of this wicked generation whether it be male or female i frankly don't give a damn If no man stands with me, I am all right with that. I know my time is up. No one hears the warning of Yah. A fool, even a fool will hear the warning. This is a generation that's beyond that. I greet you all, Yisrael. I'm going to teach today, if I can, preach. I, do, I want to, with great clarity, to bring resolution in our minds concerning the time the era that we as a nation of people we're walking in Yisraya. that we may understand a system that is predicated upon powers that as the torah would speak it is scary and powers that are contrary to yah diametrically opposed to Yah and there's an institution that is institutionalized in the minds of the masses that we are not a nation that can shemach can hear and in the process of hearing we can obey there's a battle that is raging and it is among the nation of Yisrael is a battle for our nefesh, for the substance of life, for the very marring of Yah. When he made man, he breathed the breath of life into him. And he became a distinctive thing that all hell rose up. Every kind of demonic power stood upright to watch that magnificent thing that Yah had done. And he made his fellowship with Adam. He congregated with him. He walked in the midst of him. He spoke to his mind. He breathed life on him. Yet this contingency of hell, when it saw the dynamics of man, and that's why the enemy, I say to us all, he is always trying to destroy the strength of the powerful masculinity of man that the world relegates him to an effeminate thing. He is the mastery of Yah, of everything he has created. It is man. It is man. That is the apple. That is the power of his identity. And he invested all in him. And from his bosom, he gave him a woe man to be the help, to give him the righteous words of the Mayam to be a cool drink of water, to strengthen his resolve just by her meeting the responsibility that Yah commands unto her. But this is a wicked generation. It is a generation that has been dulled by hell. There's only one way you're going to win the battle. There's only one way. And out of the midst of the powers of darkness, this force, it is a concept that is created in the mind of man to oppose you, to resist him, to walk contrary, to rebel against Almighty Yahweh, to resist the power of the testimony of Yoshua 
Hamashiach to abandon the disciplines of Yah that produce wealth and health and substance of life. Well, hell, we have abandoned that. And each is pursuing his or her own passion and desire. And we walk in such corruption. We walk in such corruption that it literally debilitates us. There is no liveliness of Yah's action in us. There is no sound and accolades of great Shaha. This is all about Shaha. It is not you being able to buy grits and groceries. It's not that, my friend. It is far deeper than that, and with great resolve of the Ruach, I want to take this simply into a little deeper dimension that we may understand. That it may open up this cesspool of darkness that our minds uh, fellowship in. We love darkness. When the light of the testimony of your sure shine, it shall call an amber of light to shine in the countenance of man, his ponim. It is the expression of a man's ponim that is express his perfection. His faithfulness, his loyalness, his commitment unto Almighty Yah. It is one thing that is amazing. Uh, it is the Ruach of Yah. The Ruach, the spirit of the word of Yah, discerns. Uh, it, it shows you the content, the, the content of your heart. And you can say things to people and you watch their reaction. The, their body language speaks to the truth. You say things to a child and their body language. And even our speech will betray us to let us know how opposing we are to Yah. When they oppose Yah's messenger, they didn't realize that they were opposing Yah. When he said you're wicked and vile, no one wants to hear that because you esteem your own damn wicked self. You're wicked. I want to say this to you all, men and the issue, you'll hear me. When a woman has a great love for her husband, everybody can see it. When a woman has a robust kindness for her man, everybody can see it. And when a man's heart is filled with great delight in his victim, his belly. And the word victim means where... The source of life flows from man. It is where everything flows. When a man truly loves his wife, everyone, not just their actions, there is an aura about his ruach and about her. And even strangers know the beauty of that love. Even strangers know that I will, my friend. You can talk. The damn talk all you want to. But it doesn't mean a damn thing. When a man has a great tenderness and kindness toward his wife, even the damn fool can see that. Can I tell you the story? I have a natural brother, he's dead. I recall my issue and I, even we were a young couple that... People were infatuated by our association and our camaraderie. People that had been married 10, 15 years longer than us. And it inspired them. And I recall being in my mother's house one day and he looks at me. He's looking at my isha. Then he'll look at me. He looks at her. He looks at me. He looks at her. But this man died without understanding the concept of love. He looks at her and he says, look at that big bastard. That's how he addressed me. He said, look at that big bastard. He's a big bastard, isn't he? He looks at her. 
And again, he says the same thing. He retorts, look at that big bastard. And he looks at my issue. He says, you know what? That big bastard loves you. That's how he said it. He didn't even know what love was. And it was not a camaraderie, my issue on I that day. He knew it. He said, look at that big bastard. He loves you, woman. That bastard loves that woman. He didn't know what love was. He did not. But he knew the ruach that emanated and the sincerity of my ruach. It was not some damn vow I committed before that deceiver that called himself uniting us in Almighty Yah. It was a commitment as a child. So that's why when a man finds a wife, he finds one of the most precious of gems. He finds an excellent thing. And because of that, Yah knows the man has feared him. And he grants unto him great riches, wisdom, a great love for Yisra'ya, a kindness toward his house. He doesn't consider his own body. He considers the body of Yisra'ya. This is the wicked generation. I despise it. And I don't want y'all to remove me now because I need to be around a little while to teach and to preach. Because you're not overcoming but one way. And that's what should emanate out of Yisrael. You see the woman, you will know she loves her husband. You see the man that you finally awaken. What did you say? It is right. It is right. Did you all hear the whole last night? Ima Arachot Kim. How that, because she listens to me, I don't want to cause any disruption in my house. So I requested of my Ish, he doesn't walk in the way. I want to send offerings and to help. But I want to do it right. So I asked him, he said, yes, you can do that. He doesn't listen to you, but he allows me to play it all day long in the house. I said, he's not listening, but he's hearing. You understand? He may stretch, stretch his head and say, who is that crazy man? But his words are sound. And they're truthful. I said, you're doing the right thing, my heart. Don't try to overrun him. If he said, don't send one damn penny, you don't send a nickel. You live faithful by him. Honor him. And then you will receive the rewards of Yah. I don't give a damn what he's done 10, 20 years ago. Who can? How can I attest to what you have done without attesting to what I have done? I'm totally wicked if I do that. If I can speak to your ills and your sins and yet hold you in accountability for that, then what about mine? No sin is any different than any sin. I don't give a damn what it is. If I went out there and slept with 50 whores in one day, is no different than her rebelliousness and her rebelling against me. Same. For sin is the transgression of the Torah. I don't give a damn if you shout hallelujah or amen. It makes me no different. Who am I talking to? You. To you. Specifically to you. When you can't see your own damn wickedness, something is sick in you. It's one thing of the strength of a wise man or a wise woman. You correct them. The word is muzah. You counsel them 
to chastise them, to discipline them, they will love you. You speak any kind of correction to a damn fool, the anger, because there's anger in the bosom of a damn fool, they get angry. They think that they supersede that. I'll tell you something, Aknikaya, I remember, and I'm going to preach. This man said to me one time, I'm standing there and he says, look at Riyadh. He's been lusting for those sisters. And of course, at first I was angry with that. Because I knew if I wanted to bump, I could bump. Not with welfare women. Not with women on welfare. Two and three babies. I could have, uh, and I did have access to not one we call a nickel dime welfare woman. You understand? And so in the initial statement, my youth rose up. I didn't say anything, my young Ak. And I recall my experience with Evangelist Hartsfield. I said, yeah, I will guard myself even careful. The fool doesn't realize what he says. He said that because that was the state of his characteristic. He was a damn dog, you understand? So he wants to implicate me because that's the way he is. But what it made me do is watch myself and guards my heart. He that think he is someone and think he has a great strength, uh, he deceives some also because he doesn't realize he possessed not one damn thing. So I didn't fight. I didn't resist him. I really began to rejoice in that. So my young friend, instead of uh, becoming in close proximity with those individuals, I, I made sure that there was a distance always that I would not find myself in that kind of predicament and the same bastard. I told him, you are wicked child of hell. You will tell the people what you have done, you beast. Of all men, he said that I was an honest man. I've never said that. I scratched my head that day. He says, Reach is an honest man. I said, I've never said that. Never proclaimed myself, to be honest. And when it came to the time for honesty, truth to prevail, I did not mince my words. I did not backpedal at all. Same man said that I was lusting, was a beast. So, Yah has shown his love toward Yisra'ya in the power of his testimony in the body of Yeshua. When a man truly loves his wife, he gives his body. And when a woman loves her ish, she gives everything. She makes her presence around him shalom. Her words are healing to his heart, to his mind. Her words are what malify to build his strength and cause his attributes to shine like he's a master technician. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. You don't even love you. I'm going to deal with that in the future, we, have, we must always speak on certain things. I'm going to deal with it and show. Even a child can look at a husband and wife and they will become amazed at their, not even their speech, but they will know something is there. And that's a fact. You're boasting? No, I see it all the time. I see it. I experience it. I'm not going to be abusive to her in my verbiage. Definitely not physically. I know her pains. The other night I was 
Give me a moment, you all. She was in such agony of pain. From here to here, both arms, no feelings. She can hardly move her arm. So what do I do? I say, let me massage. She, they have so much. React, you don't. And I watched the silent tears. You don't. I was hurting so. And she's still persistent. Tell her, sit down, woman. Don't worry about doing anything for me. I can get it done. Hallelujah. Now they do anything special for me. So I, I am massaging her fingers. She doesn't say anything to you all about it. And she doesn't mistreat you because of her, the agony of her pain. From here, she said, no feelings. I don't feel a thing. I can't even move my, but she moves them. This is a wicked generation. And that's a fact. And I watch her all the time trying to do things to heal her body in the sense that if y'all doesn't heal it, not buying no thousands of dollars with the herbs, she's trying to eat right. And even when she doesn't feel healthy, she gets out and exercise and put her body. And that's the best thing for her. I would tell her that. She can't do anything any greater than that. That's the best thing for her. Because once she resides to her reluctant position to be somewhat reclusive, uh, it's going to kill her. As long as she got that fight, she'll live. Hallelujah. And I shall stand by her. I stand by all Yisrael. Her pains are my pains. Her agonies are my agonies. I feel them. I sense them. Hallelujah. Yah says that the gift of a man that fears Yah is a tough wife. He gives him a, an excellent wife. He doesn't give that gem to every man. That's why man can walk circumspectly. He has no need of anything. I don't have no need of nothing. No clothes. The mildew is walking away with them. I don't need anything. I want to perfect that which remains. My heart being in love with y'all like the song says. I don't like the part falling in love. I like, I am in love with your shoe. I'm in love. I am in love with your shoe. I'm in love. I am in love with your shoe. For he is the best thing ever happened to me. I like that better. I don't want to fall in love with him. I am embellished with his love. No, I don't want to fall in love with her. I'm in love with her. I'm in love with Yah. I'm in love with Yah. And so my responsibility is to teach every adult. The beauty of a man and the strength of a man makes no difference who she is. The friendship, the layance, the camaraderie with the wife. And her responsibility is the same. To show the young men and the elders the beauty of a chaste wife. I was getting a cramp this morning and I know why I haven't really been eating the way I should. Listen, I ate enough meat doing soup gone. If I never eat a piece, I've had enough. I will use the word akhal. How about that? So I consumed enough, I devoured enough. If I never eat another biscuit, and y'all be my witness with the dainties, how I eat them. I will not even confess that. Because I have an adversarial individual that's very adversarial. That I won't even discuss that in the presence of that individual. You understand? I will keep that to me. Because I know what 
the resolve of that will be and uh, the engagement that is combative uh, what it produces you understand so i'll leave it at that how about that so i ate enough meat if i don't get another piece until uh, pesach i'm contented you understand can i teach you a little bit Yisra'ya, it is somewhat difficult to get through this laba, this mind that is so encased by corruption, the pure things of Yah, for us to understand. We do not realize the hour and the time that we're in. We think that we are going to just live and pursue our own adventures and it's all right. One of the most prominent things y'all did to reveal unto us the depths of Ovon. The corruption that is so perverse in our minds that we tend to do things without even conscience of Yah. We're not fearful of Him. That we do things, we react, we act uh, not according to the Torah or the wisdom of Yah. We do things uh, that actually remove us from the presence of Yah. And yet, Yah, through Yahshua HaMashiach, He opened the very wisdom. He opened the spiritual dimensions uh, that we can see the very corruption uh, of our own hearts. The heart is deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. Who can know, who can know the heart? Only Yah can. And our heart speaks things and says things that react, actions of our hearts ought not to be. That's why Yah tells us when you find a mad man or a mad woman, that flee from the presence of them. Why? Because you don't want to learn the ways of a mad man. You don't want to learn the instinctive reactions to a mad woman when they are mad you are set free from them because you will learn their ways and it will corrupt you that's what Torah says that's what the Torah says if one is in love with Yah they receive Yah's instructions and they love them they delight in that this is the wicked generation as I say to you all, oh, I can tell when a mother loves her children. I was speaking to one about one's children. It's amazing because the person did not fight against me. Most people will. We defend everything but Yah and Yahshua. We will not defend what's right, we will defend what's wicked. And there's a reason why. The mind of man has become, it has not become uh, beat, uh, beat house, uh, mikdash, whereby the power of Yah resides and uh, the testimony of Yahshua. It is the imminent power and the flow of the Ruach, uh, it brings in the living substance of life. You can go without food, but you cannot go without water. And we need the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodash in our bosom. And so our minds shall become the temple. It is not Be'at. It is not the house or the house that is set apart. To render unto Yah the offerings that He commands and that He requests of us. And so what has arisen in our minds, I will get to that. What has arisen in the mind of Yisra'ya, it is this self-proclaiming of worship it is all about worship Yisraya. it is not about silver or gold having that to buy bread because the mayhem that shall come upon this earth you're not going to be able to buy bread you're not going to in a store and buy meat you're not going to live like this and think uh, because you're in this environment uh, and your heart is full of such deceit uh, and such lies uh, and thinking that you're going to make it. It's not so, Yisra'ya. It is not going to happen. 
The Torah used the word para. But our minds are so gullible that we believe our own lies. What they say in the world, I have taught on this, uh, we must be open-minded. Just like the individual that called me from New York last night. And I said, man, shut that out. Yoshua said, my sheep, they know the voice of Yah. They yawned out, they experienced that in the depths of their bosom. The stranger, they will not follow. And we're following the strange delusion, the para of our own deceit. We're so damn gullible and wicked. And we think that we're not walking strange from Yah. And we literally are Yisrael. He's going to bring it down to hell. Because that mind is the state of mind that is tradition. It is a mind that is pernicious. It is a mind that was created. It is a mind that has been uh, organized. It is a mind that has been constituted by the powers of hell. That's contrary of Yah. That there is only one word that Yah used to describe that mind. And it is the word harem. He, harem. Harem. And it is made, created. It is kept alive for one purpose. And that is the utter destruction and the ultimate destruction of that identity. And so there's a mind that is harem. And in order for that mind to have power, it must be placed in the temple. Not in Yah's Mikdash, not in his set apart dwelling. Because light and darkness cannot dwell in the bosom of Yisrael. You cannot say you love and show the characteristics of hatefulness. It cannot be. Well, you say when you see people, they know that I'm a sincere man in whatever I do. And then when they talk to me, I would tell them I'm a dirt farmer. I farm. I don't need any accolades to extol me, to pretend that I'm something that I'm not. I said, I run cows, I step in countdown, and it breaks all of the, you know, the, the environment is brought down to a subtleness uh, that they open up to me. You understand? I said, I run cows, I run goats, chickens, whatever has to be done. And I can, I can, uh, 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 spread manure with the best of them. You understand? Not trying to create this fictitious image of a lie. I'm who I am. This harem, where does it begin? I want to begin here. In the Torah, the writings of Shaul, as he writes unto Thessalonica, because let me say this. This mine or this temple that must be established. I know that there are those that are looking for some physical building in Yerushalayim. But it's much deeper than that. And they teach by observation. And the hearing of what they've heard other men say they're writing. So it's no concept of the knowledge of that with the renewed power. So there is nothing fresh. They're simply repeating what they heard. They don't know whether it's the truth or a lie. I want to begin with the concept of this temple, the purpose and the reason. It is not the Beit Mikdash. It is not the set apart house of Yah. Can I begin here in Second Thessalonica? Yeah? I want you all that are listening. Write this down and go back and revisit it. I want to teach this today and do allow me to finish. Hallelujah. There are people that will go to the movie houses and sit two and a half hours. This is yours, Shabbat. And so when we finish, we can go home, we can eat and rest. 
Hallelujah. It says this in 2 Thessalonica, yeah, chapter 2, uh, and verse 2, I want to begin reading. Shaul says, uh, I want you to know that uh, I don't want you so soon shaken in your leba, in your mind, in your heart, whereby uh, you began to pursue other concepts uh, as to the coming of Yeshua. When one is shaken in their mind, uh, that is the open door for hell. And you will find them uh, exploring uh, and looking into all kinds of folly and doctrines uh, of hell. It is one thing of the doctrine of your, the teaching of Yeshua. It makes us free, beginning uh, with you. It frees you up from your obligation to you. It calls you to destroy the identity of you, uh, and you identify in the body of Yeshua HaMashiach. You will know it's the truth. It does a great cutting. It cuts down to the depths of one's being. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, that is vital. We must understand. He said, don't be shaken in mind, or I don't want you to be troubled, or there is a Sarah or Esa, a tribulation. He said, neither by what spirit that uh, brings forth this, uh, this teaching to you. Uh, he said, not even by Dabar, by words. He said, not even by letters uh, from us. That the day of Hash Yeshua HaMashiach uh, is at hand. That he says, let no man pathah. Uh, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you uh, by any measure. For that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. Uh, and the man of sin be revealed. Uh, and he calls him uh, the son of perdition. Herim. The one that has been created for the utter destruction. He's going to destroy this flesh. He did that in the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. And anything that rises up out of us that is not the Ruach or, or the fruit of the Peri of the Ruach, it is of hell. It is of darkness. Any time our emotions began to uh, flare up uh, and we're not controlled by the Peri of Yah, it is from the gates uh, and from the dungeons uh, of uh, hell. It is not of you. And when you speak truth to a righteous man or woman, uh, they do not rise up in indignation. Uh, it is only the fool that will rise up uh, in indignation. Uh, only the fool gets upset. But not a righteous man. Not a Sadiq bath of Tizayon. Hear this, Yisrael. He is the one that is perdition. He is the one that Yah says he is Harim. He is appointed. He is appointed. Just like we are appointed to die. He is appointed to hear him. So he is appointed for utter destruction. Whereby the earth of Yah shall rage like a beast. And there is no pity at all. We better hear this, Yisrael. There is only one way we're going to fight this battle and we're going to win. If not, just like Shaul says, it's going to be falling away. Just like the individual called last night from New York, the subtlety, see how gullible people are? See how gullible, see how patha, almost pathic, isn't it? See how they allow their minds to be open to every kind of deranged, damnable lie there is? And when they hear the truth, they say they are searching. You don't have to search no farther when you found it. When I found the pair of shoes, that's it. I don't need to search no more. You find truth, you don't need to search anymore. When a man seeks your he'll find your shoe, huh? He must get the house clean. He must rid it of you. Your cleaning hasn't been well. And he must sit in the house cleaner. You understand? You're filthy. Our hands are filthy. Then he says this. 
that one is a prediction, there is damnation upon them. You don't have to buy it. They're going to be wasted. There's destruction. Here's the catalyst here in the next verse. It says that this one, he shall uh, saw a satam. Satam. There is a vile hatred. He opposes. He is contrary. Almost like Hashatan, but it's sa or Shatam. Shatam. S A W hyphen T A M. S A T A M. It is Shatam. It is one where a man opposes the instructions of Yah's correction. It is when one begins to speak to their own wickedness. To justify the old damn corrupt ways. And that is what shall rise in the minds of the multitude. He shall rise up out of the sea of the masses of the people. And he shall cause all great, poor, small, rich, powerful to receive. To receive the mind of the beast. That our minds are, are opposed to you. That our minds diametrically oppose you. That there is an a whoring of any kind of correction from you. To speak to our sins. We get angry as hell when he speaks to us, don't we? Because we think we're better than his Torah. We get angry as hell when Yah speaks to us. When he points out our fallacies, our weakness, our wickedness, uh, we rise up against that. Uh, we rise up against the messenger like they did Moshe. Uh, who are you to tell us? Uh, and when Korah did that, his whole house went down uh, into hell. Uh, the sucking babies on the titties went down the hell. Uh. You're so stunned by I've chosen you. It was not them that I've chosen. Uh, it's you, man. I'm going to do something new. It says this beast, that shotam, that hates. It is a mind that, it is a mind, let me show you this shotam. It is a mind that cherish. You understand what cherishing something is? It is that you hold on to things that have not produced a damn thing. It is the mind that cherish animosity and hatred and hostility. I'm glad your sure doesn't cherish my sins from yesterday. My defiance of the Torah from day before. I'm so glad. You're dealing with a mind that is shotam. It is a mind of harem. Yah's going to bring that mind to hell. You must understand that the power that is expensed or dispensed, it must come from the governing power of the mind of man. Everything in Torah, you will see that it begins in the mind. You can see the kingdoms, the Medio Persian, you can see the Babylonian, you can see the kingdom of the Grecians, you can see the Roman kingdom. It all begins here with this harem, the spirit of harem, that opposes you. It is one of destruction. And the power of Shotam, it began to exercise the rights. And we began to look upon ourselves, say that we're greater than the most high. It is about me and damn everything. Woe unto us. Woe unto us. Woe unto us. Woe unto us. We find fault in Yah because we perceive we have found fault in our Ach or our Hot. So that's what we do. Who opposes us? Who resists the truth? Who opposes us? That's what Hashatan expressed a resistant, a rebellion of truth. Who opposes, who opposes and exalt himself above all or he that is called the most high above. You understand how our minds exalt itself above Yah? And our feeble, wicked flesh extinguishes itself above Yah's correction? 
We exalt ourselves, we exude ourselves, uh, we embellish ourselves with lies uh, to think that we're doing right and we are wicked as hell. So we began to exude the flush above Yah. We began to speak Shekha lies to ourselves. Uh, anyone can go on the street and tell a whore. You can go to any corner and walk. You know what the prostitutes are. And you know they're prostitutes. You can go with the crackheads, the thieves, the meth, amphetamine abusers. Uh, people walk in stores. They discern things about people. They understand all. Oh, and they will talk to each other about them. But yet you will not talk to you about you. You've never done that? You've never done that? You are a damn hypocrite if you say you haven't. Uh, but no, let nobody tell you about you. It's offensive. You are an offense to Yah. You vile thing of hell. The very onslaught of love is correction. That's love. You don't understand that you're a damn fool. I don't care who you are. Listen, you don't have to stay here. You don't have to be here and you don't have to listen. Can I talk a little bit? I will. Whether you give me permission. That exalt himself all that is called the most high. Or him that is shiha, that is esteem. The accolades are brought before him for his great power. So that he, this beast, this spirit, this shotan, this mind that opposes you. We hear things and we get upset about it, don't we? We see things and we oppose that. Your speaks and we oppose that. We oppose it because we don't like it. We oppose it because it, uh, it, it's a direct violation of our damn flesh. So he sits in the lava. He opposes you. You're not going to find someone on the street saying, I oppose you, I oppose God. Nah, people will say he's insane. It is greater than that. It is greater than that. It is much more complex than that. You will never understand until you get the sin. The willingness to practice opposition against you out of our damn hearts. So that he, as Yah, he sits in Beit Hamikdash of Yah, showing himself that he is the mighty one. Do you understand that? You think that Yah is going to give this kind of revelation unto babes and cause them to handle the Torah of Yah? Unwise young men, unwise women. Because line must be upon line and precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. You think he's going to thrust babes into this kind of knowledge and understanding? Where he has never labored to build one thing? He sits in the bayat, the house, exalting himself. Ask yourself a question. Do we really from our minds... There's a continuous exaltation of Yah and praise. You exalt your dislikes, your hatred, your anxiety. I will, man. Your anger. You speak on all those things. They are your gods. You don't have to bow down. Thing is still the truth. Because out of the out of the heart, the abundance of the mouth speaks. If your shoes in your heart, you talk your shoe up. When you're mad, you talk your shua. When you're hurting, you talk your shua. When there's agony, you talk your shua. When there's trials, you talk your shua. When the pain's overexerted, you talk, yeah. You cry, yeah. Now we cry with anger, hostility, and this damn putrefy stench of the shotam, this mind that opposes you because you don't believe him. So he sits. His place. Worship is always some form uh, of a verbal expression. And so what we do, we take our worship to those, those that are the same damn temple. Uh, of the same damn temple. Uh, and we are ours and they are theirs. Uh, 
We come in God's house to lift up his mighty and powerful name. Sing to him. So you all sing the same damn bird songs. Same complaints. Same bitterness. You better hear me, hypocrites. You sing the same damn lies. The same rhetoric. We talk about a man, a temple. We talk about a place that, uh, that is built in the mind uh, to offer up the offerings. Uh, does not Yah command us to offer the offering of Todah? Well, how do you do that? You got to do it with your faith. You must do it with your damn mouth uh, and get that damn wicked thing that is uncontrollable. This law shown uh, under the law of Yah that it shines uh, your damn evil. Uh. I'm going to preach. And I'm going to tie it all in. Don't worry. I got it. I couldn't understand why y'all began to take me this way other day. Ten pages of, eight pages of scripture. Yet I was at least able to condense it down to six. He sits in the temple. He doesn't sit in the Bayat Mikdash, the house where the praises and the offerings of Yah goes continuously. For the Torah commands the Levi that the menorah of the light of the Ruach, the light of the fear of Yah, the light of, uh, of the Ruach of wisdom, Hukmah, the weir, Ruach of Bina understanding, the ru Ruach of Yahweh, the Ruach of Musa. Is that counsel? Is that not one of the seven Rahim of Yah? Is that not one of the seven Rahim of Yah? And David, you may think you understand what counsel is. It begins with chastisement, correction, rebuke, a praying one. We're so damn dumb. So he commanded in the bed of Yah for the seven light, for the lights to never go out. The oil. What oil fuels the light of Yad Rahim? It is the oil of the Ruach HaKodesh. He said, it is a hookah. It is a stature earlier. Viatra oh, 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 yeah. All of your dwelling, all of your generations. So is the light out? What asked me that I said, maybe in you, but not in me. I have the light of the Ruach HaKodesh. I certainly have the light of the, the Ruach of the fear of Yah, the Yareh. I have the Ruach of counsel. I have the Ruach of wisdom. I have the Ruach of being, oh, of being the, the wisdom, understanding of Yah. It transcends this little piece of metal that is corrupt. Look how, look, look at the darkness. That's corruption there. And your, your countenance show your corruption. The darkness, that's why he was set in the temple. He was set in the mind. And he shall administer this kind of worship uh, that uh, no man can offer and buy a cell unless he has that name. Unless he's given unto that spirit. We must have the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we're not going to Yisrael. We're not going to Gaba. And they overcame their Gaba. They were strong. They had strength. They had nurturing. That is what Gaba is. They have the great strength of Yah. And they overcame the powers of hell. You will never overcome that damn foolishness in your mind, Yisrael. And they overcame how? By the dam of, dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. And what is by the words of their aid. Their testimony. Though he slay me. I will trust him. Though all men do me wrong, I will operate in the Ruach of Yah, you damn hypocrite, to think you're righteous. You have a sense that someone is doing you wrong and you don't operate the way Yah says you are a damn fool. I'm glad that I was never a jokester and played.
begins here. This is the temple. And we must either have a temple that we are constructing. I don't prefer using the word temple because of its relationship to Dagon and all of the demons of hell. I rather say Beat. Beat Mich Mikdash. Or the tabernacle of Yah. Well, that has no relevance for us. Can I read us this out of uh, 1 Corinthians? First Corinthians, uh, Corinth, yeah, First Corinthians. You all bear with me now. Don't go anywhere. Quit eating the fried chicken and worrying about your belly. Just sit still. It says in the First Corinthians chapter six, what is the Beit Mikdash? Here in chapter six, verse nineteen, this is the question that Shaul asks us: Do you not, Yada? Do you not know? Hold that in 2 Thessalonica, where we just turned from. 2 Thessalonica, chapter 2, verse 4. Because I want to go back to that. Just put your finger there. Hold that, please. And also, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. He asked the question, do you not yada? When one knows, one has experience. One has the knowledge. He says, do you not yada that your betten, your body, your betten, the seat of your appetite, your, your mental, spiritual, and physical faculties, do you not know that your body is bed, ha, mikdash, that your body is the house, the dwelling place, most translations will say the temple of the Ruach HaKodash. What is Yad? Is Yad Ruach? Is he Ruach or is he a Ruach? He is Ruach. Ruach is the breath of life. Do you not know that your body is what the breath of Yah's life dwell? Do you not know your body, Yisra'ya, is the Beyaz of Yah? It is Hamikdash. Hamikdash is the place where the all things go up before Yah. It is where the praises and the actuallys, uh, as Dawi speaks, uh, beginning there in Tehillim 145, uh, all the way through that the praises of Yah should, uh, should be flow from our lips, uh, and there shall be accolades of worship unto Yah. Yeah. Yeah. He shall sit in the temple. He shall sit in the mind of man. And he says, offer unto me worship. And so it's drawn from a belly that is full of darkness, from every kind of evil concept. From every kind of vile things that we have laid hold to. From a water that is so polluted. You cannot allow anyone to pollute your water. Don't allow anyone to pollute your I don't give a damn if it's daddy, mama, husband, wife. Don't allow them to do that. You let nobody. You do what is right before. I don't give a damn how wrong I do you do right. You let the power, the persuasiveness of your open-mindedness of words, uh, this pata to destroy you. Let no man, let no one deceive you, Yisra'ya. Let no one pata think you're gullible and insensitive to you. You can't talk like this if I was gullible, if I was a hypocrite, because I'm exposing me. You understand that? I don't mind getting naked before y'all's people. It's a damn shame when pride, when I go on, when I pride, majesty of us uh, supersede me, bear myself before Yisrael. Yeah, I want to be naked. Strip me, y'all. Yeah. Strip and show the shameness of my nakedness. It's like you getting naked and you look at yourself, are there certain things you're ashamed of? All right then. All right. You look at yourself in a way and you say, wow. I don't care how fun you may think you are, there are always flaws there. There are flaws, I don't care who you are. Does it not say that our body is, probably in your rendition, it says the temple of Yah, of the Ruach, in 1st Corinthians yeah, 619, what does it say in 2nd Thessalonica? Yeah. It says that this one exalt himself above all that is called Yah or that is worship, so that he sits in the house or the temple. Does it use that expression? That he sits. So what is the temple then? If I must use that expression, 
Where is the temple? Is it something that's going to be built in Mount Moriah? And there's the debate on what is going to be built. Mount Moriah, Mount Olives, uh, there's great debate. But I'm telling you, uh, it is built here, Yisraeliah, and I will prove it out. We can see every house that Yah has allowed man to build. Uh, in every, even, the, even the beauty of the, of the house of Shalom, Shalom or all the artifacts, uh, it was brought down to hell. Why? Because uh, man corrupts everything. Uh, he's going to build it together piece by piece. Uh, he's going to lay every stone. Yoshua, he is the chief cornerstone. Uh, and the builders rejected him. Uh, they said, I don't want my mind to be built uh, with the principles of Yah and Yoshua. So they are relegating him down to nothing. Uh, and Yah said, every piece is going to be laid in place. Uh, I'm going to build my Mikdash. Uh, it is going to be a house where I'm going to dwell. Uh, and he'll rise this beast out of hell. Uh, a mind that opposes Yah. A mind that detests any kind of correction. Every son, daughter Yah receives. Everyone he loves, he corrects. He's not going to speak to you out of heaven. He have gifts in the earth. They have wisdom. You may not have wisdom, but they have wisdom. They may not be the most wisest, but they're wise because their lives have afforded them experience in life that they can't see things. Did not our parents do that? Come on, Ak, you're older than me. Could not your mother discern things without you saying anything? Come on, you're an older man. Could not your mother, your father discern things even before they even took place? Sure they could. Could not they tell you that's a bad person? Get away from him. Huh? Yet we're so damn dumb we can't even discern our own nature. And we're so wicked that we exalt ourselves. Even our sins, have, even the, post, the pillars of our strength have become our wickedness. Our opposition to Yah and our defiance of the Torah. And that's why our strength is based upon our own wickedness and our own characteristics and our own personality. You're going down to hell. You're going to be brought down. There's nothing more beautiful. That's the only way that y'all could express love to us. That he calls that to dwell in us and it is expression, my bath. It is a pure expression. It's beyond, uh, come on, it's beyond. It's not something that uh, whereby you hustle, you get angry, then get over that. It's one thing that Yah has blessed me with. I, I don't say it because I'm, I think I'm special. But I can be angry this morning. It's over with me the next second. All right. It is the truth. Because I will not let that follow me to my death. Get what a man has done to me. That's all right, man. You haven't done anything. Just go on. I just don't want to be bothered with you. Go on. Come on, man. I won't do you no harm. Not at all. I, I, I will not try to put you in a position to cause mayhem upon you. This one, when he sits in our minds, it is always to oppose the identity of Yisra'ya to bring them down. And that you offer worship unto this beast in the hostility of your anger. And the hostileness of your, of your wickedness that you retain. Yah, he, as Zohen Yaramaya brought out, he said, how far is the east is from the west. And that's how far our sins are. We're here, and our sins east that way and west that way. What is the end of Yah? He's beyond infamous. He's beyond infinity. You can't define Yah with that. And you tell me I'm going to retain things that she or he or he or he has done to me or against me, not me. I will not die giving my body to all front to hell uh, unto this one that has taken place uh, in your mind and say, offer it up to me, complain, uh, murmur. How do I know it's the truth? When they came out of Mr. Raim and when y'all put them in the wilderness, did they begin to murmur? They began to, murmur is a type of enchantation of hell. Uh, that's why you'll see people, their mouths will get all white and their slava get thick. I'm talking, I'm talking loud, I'm talking fast, but my mouth is not that way. My mouth is not that way. You don't see no damn slava here and oh, spit on it. No. And so when they began to murmur and mutter, they began by divination. I will prove it out. Know what I'm talking about. And labor in the Torah. 
I don't exalt me, but I lay, but I know what I'm saying. I will show you. Just follow me. And the first thing they began to do, they began to murmur. Did they, did they not? And they began to enchant, we want us a God. We want us a God. Did they not? Did not they do that? Sure they did. And they built them one. And say, we will have a feast for this God. And you have a feast. What do you do? Can I show you an example of what they do? They get together and they murmur like hell. And they're eating and they're filling their bellies. They're satisfying their God and they're complaining about him. Complaining about this one. Complaining about that one. Complaining about this one. Complaining about you. Complaining about me. Complaining about you. Complaining about you. That's what they do. They eat. They eat. That's their time of festivity. And they're always complaining. You're not going to get this from Benny Hinn. You're not going to get it from you. If I don't prove it out, I'm a liar, all right? Can I perceive my precious young aunt? Hallelujah. Again, may I read this in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Shaul said, do you not know or yara that your betin, your body, the place where you hunger for righteousness, you seek for Yah, the seat whereby all of your activities, whether they're mental, spiritual, physical, are carried out. Do you not know that your betin, your body, is be'er ha-mikdash of ru'ach ha-kodash? We know that Yah is ru'ach. He is not just a Ruach, he is Ruach. He breathed and life came. He breathed upon the trees and life came. He breathed upon man and life came. He brought out of woman the life of the man, that's his strength. I say to all you daughter, I, if, if I get close to no one, I want to be closer. If I'm close to her, I will be close to him. I will be close to him. I, I will be close to her. I will be so close to her, I will treat her like I treat her. That I will not touch or impose uh, or, or overthrow her at all because I will not do it to her. If I'm close to her, I will be close to you. If I do right by her, I will do right by you. If I honor her, I will honor you. Yeah. Yeah. And if she honors me, she will honor your husband. I don't care if he's younger than her. She will not tell him to go to hell. Or, 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 come here, young. She will not do that. She has never. I don't give a damn what anyone says. She honors Zuck and Yeramaya like she honors me. He calls her email. She calls him son, but she still honor him. Where are you going? Well, I, I, I'm going to be the nanny. I'm a babysit for them. They're going out. So I said, I'll babysit the children. I said, they know how to go out by themselves. They don't need no babysitter. Well, I, I told Zaki, I babysit. For what? You said you want to go with them. She needs some help watching. I said, no, she doesn't need help watching them. This damn wicked generation. Well, I already promised her I would, I would play the role of a nanny, babysit, and take the children and watch. I don't mind you going because I trust him like I trust me. And I trust me. I trust him. I trust my ark. I don't care what the failures and the shortcomings. I can attest to mine. I will, man. And my ark that no men are close around me, they know how I am. I want to die that way. If I die no other way, I want to be kind to them. I want to prefer them over me. Take, make sure they're taking care before me. Damn the bills. How about that? Do you not know your body is the place of the Ruach which is in you? Is the Ruach in you which is in you? Which you have of Yah and you're not your own? This one shall rise up in the leba, the mind, the conscience of man. He shall call himself, I'm a God. I'm the Mosa. I'm the one that uh, speaks what goes from here. I'm the one that show my likes or my dislikes. I'm telling you, Yisra'ya, and oppose everything that is of your opposed Torah, 
A post love uh, that you don't even know how to greet. You don't even know how to embrace. Uh, oppose the tenderness of Yah. Oppose the kind affections. That's part uh, of the Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, to be kindly affectionate. Uh, and when you're not kindly affectionate uh, toward Yisra'ah, you are a damn beast. Uh, you have this spirit. And I will identify the spirit. Uh, the Torah calls it Nakash. I've been expressing it as Tanim. Or Behemoth. But it is Nakash. If I get to nothing today, I will get to that. This Nakash. You must understand what it defines. Hallelujah. Your sin, your prophet. Send the messenger. Send those that will speak among us with great truth that will cause us to repent. I gave her space of time to repent. And the damn Isabel did not repent. He said, I'm going to kill our babies. I'm going to kill the life in her. And we don't have life in us. Life to love y'all. If there's one thing that we all must do, Ak Zakin Shimri, we will always greet, I say, I have no complaints, and I have none, Zakin. He said, me either. I said, if I do, you put a stick on me. He said, I can't do that. I said, no, you better do it. I have no complaints. I'm alive. I don't care if I'm hurting here or here or there. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I know from the grave I cannot praise you. And I'm going that way one day. So is she. And so are you. And that precious gem in your arm. So is she. And so we want the works that we do from this mikdash, the offerings unto Yah, to speak for us. You search Torah and see what murmuring brought upon people, and that's what it shall be. Yahshua causes people to go through a sarah, a time of great distress. And many are going to fall, just like they did in the wilderness. They began to murmur. Because the temple was in their mind because they had served Dagon and the gods of, of the Coptic, of Misraim. They had served the gods of Misrai, of Egypt. We have the gods of Egypt. We came out of her. Zakim Bidimi often tell us, but we haven't gotten the Egypt out of us. We're still eating the bread of Egypt. We're still regressing back to Egypt and things that were done, have done, done past. It's a wickedness. It's vile. And it's not of you. And you're going to die too. I say to my wife, can I say this to you, my Ema? I say to her, Isho, I don't care what happened. Always be kind. Especially to Yisra'ah Yah here. Because if Yah takes me, before you and I prefer him taking her before me that's cold now I can defend better I'm a fighter she's the kind of warrior I am I say you be kind that they may be kind to you don't care what no one says just do right and that's the way it should be that we should bear the burdens of one another I said to my Zachim I bear your burdens I take the workload don't worry Yosef will take it. We'll handle it. What a great privilege. What a great privilege. That we can do that for each other. What a great privilege. In the cotton field, your great, great grandpappy saw grandmammy, she couldn't move the way she could. And he knew the quarter had to be done. And in all of her agonies, she was there. He didn't have to speak, say, hon. His heart cried with great agony, longing for the day that Yah would grant him uh, his kaha, his liberty, his freedom. And yet he would take that low, baby, you use the guan yan and sit down. He's broken from the hard labor. And yet he never complained. His tears were pure. He didn't let her see it, but he cried because he felt her agony. And he will pray to Yah, Yah, I, I, I need her. But if you take one, take her. I'll be all right. And she'll just say, baby, I'm so tired. 
they would die that way. I mean, they would go home and sit down and ask, baby, I'm so tired. You that are so hard and harsh and wicked, you have no sensitivity to nothing like that. She said, baby, I'm just tired. I was going to lay down. And he says, you uh, want something? Baby, cold drink of water? Yeah, I said, give me just a little sip, baby. Mm, this water is so cold. I'll be all right. You go, you go on. She didn't say go on. You go on. You go on. Go on. Go on. on. I'll be all right. When he would come back, the beauty of her countenance spoke. If we have nothing else, my young Beth, it's the beauty of your countenance, not what you put on. It's that beauty that speaks of the volume of what is in transit here from your heart. You work on nothing. You work on that beauty. Damn fixing yourself up. Can't go around the Torah of Yah. I'm glad he speaks to me this way. I want to be right above all things. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to be sincere. Listen to this. Hallelujah. He exalts himself above all that is called Yah. How are we going to battle against this? We, we cannot in this great sarah, this time of great agony. Yeah? The only way we're going to have any kind of gaba, any kind of strength or power, or any kind of uh, uh, to be strong man and to be strong uh, bath of Tizayona, we must do it by the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we cannot love our lives unto the death. That we die, do we die daily? Do we impel the, the lust of our flesh and our ruach and perfect that which is kados before Yah? That should be our task every day, killing ourselves. That's our task. To never let anything harbor in your heart. Or give a damn what it is. You go to one and say to them, get it out. It will kill you. I watch those here and I watch those that have left. They retained something that happened 10 years ago. How sad. You're very shallow. You don't even know what love is. You have no sensitivity of love. You are a beast. You have a beast nature. And you have the spirit of a beast. Even the cow in the field, forgive me, Yah. Even the cow in the field doesn't render a punishment. Simeon and I was in the field yesterday over there on the other side yesterday. And I said to Simeon, we, we have a bull. And he, I think he has some Brahma. And that Angus, I said, Simeon, he's a real man. I said, that's a man there. That bull, Simeon, he comes over there and sniff and licks Simeon's hand. I said, that's a real man. That's a real man. He's a man. And I said, it won't be long, but I looked at old big black house. He's every bit 1,500 pounds. He's a real man. You understand? But although that little bull challenged him, he doesn't remember how he bucked that bull yesterday and to become relentless on the little bull and crush him. He will knock him down. They will rob. Young man goes his way and the bull goes his way and take care of the harem. And we are people that we don't even have the nature of beasts. It is sad. I don't give a damn who I'm touching. I intend to. You don't realize how vile your wickedness is. You don't realize it. Your mind has been so seared, there's no conscience. When a mind is so seared with the heart iron, there's no consciousness or even care concerned. Why would I say to my uh, pick up this 500 pound thing without me trying to help him? I'm going to put more into the lifting of that than he will. And you. That's why we need the Gaba. And they overcame the Gaba. We have the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have our testimony and we don't love our lives. We die daily. We die for Yisra'ya. We lay down our lives because uh, Yisra'ya is our Re'ach. And it's one thing about a true friend. You love them all the same. Love is love. It's not this damn false thing we call love. 
Love is sincere. It's beyond an expression. There's an action that is associated with that. But there is something. It is the expression of the mind of Yah. It is the emotion of Yah. It looks beyond uh, my frail nature. My ways, my fits unto you. It looks beyond that. Uh, it regrouped and gathered you back into my bosom. Uh, this damn wicked generation. Hard and wicked. Stubborn. I'm not taking a damn thing back. You see, those that are cold, they have no expression. Yah's not cold. He's not cold. He doesn't have this distance, segregation. Something is twisted in your damn mind. I love congregation. You know, I know it's something sick in your mind. Can I tell you my zakah? I don't know what I'm talking about. Because there was a time I didn't want nobody around me. I don't need your approval. Tell that, my friend. I didn't want nobody around me. I didn't want nobody in my house. I didn't want to be around nobody. But can I tell you something, my friend? I knew that that was a sickness. I was a young man, 22, 23 years old. I began to cry unto Yah, crying tears. I didn't even know I was delivered, but he delivered me. Yah would say when I began to minister, come to my house, let me cook for you all. In the, and the ark would come, man, I could cook some meal. I didn't just start cooking now. I've been cooking for a long time. Cook. Come on, brothers, come to my place, let's eat. No, not my natural brothers. I'm talking about the true house of Yisrael. His love is beyond that expression. And that's a fact. He sits. He takes power in our minds. This is where all worship comes from, doesn't it? This is what everything, it doesn't come from this little dirty thing we think is a heart. It's nothing but a muscle. It comes from the laba. It is the source of life comes from here. And if we, doesn't get, if we do not get this Torah in our mind, we cannot fight against the enemy. You know, listen to how Yahshua is going to fight against this one in Revelation quickly. And that's why the word must fight against it in our mind. We must have preachers that declare the truth with fire in their betim. Revelation chapter 1 verse 16. They must have fire in their loins. Uh, the word of Yah is a fire. It's a consuming fire. And if we don't have that fire in us, we're not going to fight against that. Uh, in my Isha's mind. Uh, in my Achiosippi's mind. In, in my friend uh, 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 Shimri's mind. In uh, my Zokin. Uh, uh, my friend uh, Micaiah. It says this in Revelation 1 16. It says that your sure had in his right hand the seven kochab. The seven kochab. And the word kochab, when we see that, it represents that which blaze. Can we not see this here today? It's not a blazing as the sun, but it is a light, isn't it? And that is what the Rahim of Yah represents. And when one has the seven Rahim of Yah, it is a blazing fire in them. He had the seven Rahim, or the seven stars of Yah, in his hand. You must have the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. You got your mama's ways and your daddy's, and your brothers and your sisters, and it has corrupt you. And that's the truth. Yoshua had in his right hand seven chokhab. Uh, it says, and out of his feth, out of his mouth, uh, this is important to understand, uh, it says, out of his mouth went a sharp uh, two edged uh, herab, a sword. The word of Yah, above all, we must take the sword of the Ruach, which is what? Which is the Torah of Yah. You got the spirit of your God a murmuring. You cry out to your God. You have this sotam in your mind. You are shakta. You're open-minded. You will not hear the mind of your shoe speak to you. 
And so there is no power of the fire of Yah. When one speaks, when one has the power of the sword of the Ru'aka, which is the word of Yah, you have lies, you have uh, the past in your mind. Uh, and that's what the enemy wish should play on. Look what he's brought you. Look how you live your life. You never had anything. You don't have anything. And you're going to die without anything. I don't give a damn if you're Donald Trump. I don't give a damn if you're Bill Gates. You're going to die without anything. Nobody's going to the grave with you when you die. No living soul. You didn't bring a damn thing here. You said you came empty. You leave empty. You're not taking a damn thing out of this world. You came with nothing. Naked I came. Let's travel this world naked. Not hiding. Not allowing that spirit to dwell in our minds to offer up offerings unto hell. Murmuring. I'm going to teach on it all. There's a message I got on that. Someone has taught on that. There was an ox said to me, Ray, we have 200 plus messages from the ox there. So if anything goes down where well, we cannot fellowship, my friend, how are you, Ak Charles? We're going to tear that whole house, L.A. Cali, down when we come. Sure we are. He said, if we can't get you, we can listen. Genuine, sincere Ak. You know it's in him. I've had men to call me. Me call you as a special friend to us here. I never call him. He's quiet, unassuming, isn't he? Never call him. He came the other day with Horace. Oh, me Kaya. We sat there for a while, about 40 minutes. Zakhenya Ramaya came in. And I excused him because I, I had to excuse me. He knows what I'm talking about. And I said, it wasn't the offering he gave. It's just his beautiful ruach that I enjoy. This ark out here in California, there's not two days go past. He's not the type that has to speak to me. Ruach, I know you're busy. I just want to say, man, you don't know how much I appreciate you. I bless you. I bless you, man. I appreciate what you do. Thank you so much. Don't call me back. And I may not call him back until he's called four or five times. It's the truth. I'm not lying. When I get in the house in the evening, it's time. I'm tired. I just don't have the energy to talk a whole. I don't. Look at a few things, study a little bit, and I go to bed. It says that he has the seven rachim, the seven uh, kokab in his hands, uh, and out of his mouth with the sharp two as hareb. And the sword in every indication, the word hab, a uh, hareb, uh, it represents to smite down, to kill, to destroy, to totally annihilate. And that's the power of the word of Yom. When you speak to yourself in psalm, in psalms, in hymns, I don't like the word hymn because I know what it has been deducted from. We speak to ourselves in psalms, in the Tehillim of Yah, in singing to ourselves. We're speaking by the fire of Yah's word. Not that's what the powers of hell do of this one that rises up and says, I'm the most high. We offer offerings in our murmuring, our complaining, our, our bitterness, our anger, and it represents in our countenance, our anger countenance, the way we walk. Our bodies are brought subject unto that. Pausing ourselves. We're pausing our minds. We're pausing our emotions. I was talking to this arc the other day. We were fencing. I said things to him. I don't take them back. I meant what I said. I don't take one word back. I don't care who offends. I meant what I said. That's why I said it. And somewhere we have to have someone that's not blind. If, we, if I'm blind, then I'm the blind and you're blind and we're going to fall into a ditch. We need someone with the seven ruchim, with the kokab, that which illuminates and shines bright. We need someone with that kind of ruach, don't we? And he fought against this kingdom power with the sword, the herap. 
You're not going to bring it down. You're not going to smite it down. But by the word, Yeshua is the word. He must be in us. When we talk, as the old folks would say, I talk Yeshua. I live Yeshua. I walk Yeshua. I sleep Yeshua. That's the way they testified. They, they didn't know anything any better. But that's the way they testified. Oh, baby, I talk Yeshua. I live him. I walk him. I sing him. I eat Yeshua. I, I, whoa! That's what they would say. And that's the only way you're going to fight against what? This kingdom, uh, this tabernacle, this tent, uh, this temple of your mind uh, that is so dumb, that oppose Yah, oppose uh, his truth, uh, oppose. Uh, come on, when you're wise, you don't oppose any kind of correction. Uh, although uh, this one is wrong when she says something to her, uh, you still a, a wise man. Uh, he he receives uh, receive any kind of correction. To the wise, uh, all is pure. Even when it's tainted, it's pure because he grasped out of that the nutrients and the virus of that. Even when you charge him wrong, he said, that's all right. This will make me better. To the pure, all things are pure. To those that are defiled and unbelieving, there's no one pure. Because they're so defiling, they don't have no belief in yet they're vile and they're wicked. This is what it's going to take. We're going to need the sword of our mouth. You're not going into the kingdom. I'm just flat out telling us. You're not going the way we're going. We're just not Israel. Yeshua is not tiring. The word doesn't wait on you. Did y'all hear that? The word of Yah doesn't wait on you. It's not going to park itself. Just come on, come on. No, when you hear the word, you don't harden your heart. As in the days of provocation, as they provoke Yah. We can say without false pretense of some kind of expression, it doesn't mean a damn thing. When you hear the Torah of your heart, not your heart, as in the days of provocation, don't provoke Yah. They provoke Yah because they oppose Him. And because of that, death came upon His house. So you don't harden your heart. When you hear the word, not my brother, nor my sister, but it's me, oh Yah. I need your deliverance today. Not their sin, their actions toward me, oh yeah. I need your deliverance today. It's not what you have done to me. It's what I have done to you and my response to you. You think on a job that you, if you were working, you will respond to someone if they say to you, you're 10 minutes late from lunch, you're going to break your neck to explain to them, yes, yes, yes sir, I, I, well, well, what happened? I guess, I, I. You don't say, well, I'm not 10 minutes late. You don't say that. You're 10 minutes late. And he's sitting there watching. He waits for you to come to the door. And the first thing when you walk to the door, your heart starts papillating. Boom, 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 boom. Chip, boom, chip, boom, chip, boom, boom, boom. You get scared. Your job, your paycheck. Simeon and I get into conversation. I say, okay, leave it alone. I'm finished with it. Because it doesn't, it doesn't strengthen the house of Yisrael. It doesn't make us prolific. Uh, and simply to say that, uh, that we have the profound instincts of Yah and Yahshua. We have a revelation that is so profound. We know that this doesn't mean a damn thing. It's so trivial. It has no value to us. But not that power that opposes Yah. When the sons of Yah went to present themselves to Yah in Eob, did not the enemy come to? And so when Yah sent the, Mele, the Melach, and the Melach, uh, he's only around those that fear Yah, he encamped around them. And the fear of Yah, it is, a, it is a praises and exaltation, it is a worship to Yah, it extends him. Everyone has this mutated conscience uh, that has been produced by their own wickedness uh, and the powers that have uh, infused their wickedness into that. Uh, as when the angels fell, they came and had sex with the women upon the earth. Uh, then you have a demented, twisted, torted, hybrid mind. Uh, we must let the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach be in us. Uh, and that mind please Yah in all things, did it not? Uh, when they accuse him, did he bring an accusation against them? Uh, so when someone accuse you, you're going to accuse them and say they're worse than you. You are damn flat out fool. Yeah. Yes, they're nose you. 
You damn wicked man, you stupid foolish woman. It's hard for a fool to understand anything. Even Sophonia said, charge them not. Let this not be late to their damn stupidity. My act to me wrong, I do him wrong. He said, yeah, let it not be late. Discharge. How you doing now? And move on from that. That's how we do. But not this kingdom. We think that, well, that's, it's not applicable to us. Everything in the book is applicable. It applies to us. It applies to you. And there's a power that manipulates us. It is called Nachash. When the Torah talks about the serpent, he was the most subtle, beguiling one in Adam. Does it not say that? So the word serpent in its purest expression, it is Nachash. One that bewitches the mind, all foolish collusions, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the Torah. And this one shall rise up, this beast, this beast, this Tanim, this beast with the mind of Hashatan. At any time we oppose Yah in anything, in correction, in judgment. One of the seven Ruachim of Yah is the Ruach of judgment, isn't it? Is it not the Ruach of judgment? Do you judge? Oh, I don't judge you are a damn liar. We judge whether our minds and our hearts are right. We judge out of a faulty spirit. We judge one another when our hearts are so damn corrupt, so unclean. You want to try the spirit, try that wickedness in you. Draw that uh, cesspool of darkness uh, that rise up out of your bosom uh, that you don't even generate the very beauty of love, affection, kindness, tenderness uh, and there's nothing of that nature associated with you. How about that? Get that right, lady. I want to correct my issue. Because Shaul says, you don't realize that I'm the Savior. Forgive me, Yah, that I will save my house. When Moshe says, who's on your side? Levi said, damn them all. And they pull their sword, did they not? They hit him. Say, kill them all. Kill the brother. Kill the father. Kill the brother, the brother. Kill them all. I want to show us something here. This Nakash. This Nakash. Isn't that the nature of Nakash? Oppose ya! He knows the day you defy him. Hell, you can say, look at me, I'm a god. I know I choose what's right and wrong. And you do that, don't you? What do you think is right? This is Nakash. This is Nakash. This is the power of your God and you wash and you offer offerings unto your belly. Your belly. That's why Yah, as Shaul speaks to the husband and wife, it said, let it be the hidden man of your heart, which is incorrupt. So if your heart is incorrupt, it is not corrupt, then it brings out incorruptible things. It doesn't bring out corrupt things. It brings out things that are pure and right. Things that are sensitive to the body of Yah, doesn't it? So he says unto Shavah, the day you defy Yah, the day you oppose Yah, the day you lift up yourself to say, I'm greater than Yah, he opposes and exalted himself all that is called Yah. That you must bring the offerings of accolades you cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark of his name and his number. And these damn bastards are telling you to buy gold and silver. These are jackasses created by hell to bring you under that folly of delusion. And they are going to hell right along with you. The day you defy Yah. There's a standard, there's a code for Yisrael among his people. That's the code. It breaks every shackle. You truly learn to care for something greater than you care for you. And don't tell me when someone sees that they will know it. When you see a man that cares for someone, you will know it. 
You see a woman that really loves her husband? Hell, you wouldn't know it. Every man knows that. Every man knows that. There was one, he's gone up. He would always tell me, I wish my wife was like your wife. I would say, hell, you don't know what I'm going through. I did that to diffuse it. And not even, I knew his wife was a Jezebel. I say it. I knew she was a damn wicked witch. He would say to me, Riyak, you don't know. I said, no, you don't know. You don't know what I go through. You don't know what I'm going through. I'm not taking it back. He said, I wish she was like your wife. I said, man, you don't know what I'm going through. Hell, you don't know the trouble she's giving me. When one's mind opposed you it is of hell. It is the spirit of Jezebel. That's why Yahshua said, I'm going to kill. Yahshua said that. I'm going to kill your damn babies. Your taff. I'm going to destroy the ones that suck your titty, all right? And all those that suck your titty. All those that gather in your conclaves of darkness. Uh, you got folly. Anytime you, you find a group of men uh, together. And it's nothing but laughter. There's folly. There's something is wrong. Anytime you find a group of women together. When you can hear them. Uh, that laughter. Something is wrong. Uh, and you'll be surprised. You think that you're in your little conclaves. Uh, and you're laughing so loud. No one hears you. But you don't realize that someone hears you. And any time you find that damn folly whereby your laughter is so robust uh, and yet your damn praises to Yah doesn't mean a damn thing. Uh? Yeah. Come on and talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can hear your laughter there. If I walk by your place or your place, uh, I hear the father in Yah's house. I can hear something is sick in your damn mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's an offering unto hell. So anytime you find that, how do I know it's the truth? When they go offer today the offerings unto the nifty lions of Penn State, will the people be robust? Will they be drinking? Will they get drunk? Do they not get the spirits in them? When Michigan State plays Notre Dame, it's not enough room for 110,000 people. They have big monitors out. Every bar is doing that game. I remember many years ago, I was in Alabama, Montgomery. It was Auburn and Alabama. The whole town shut down. I'm like, what is wrong here? And I don't care where you went, starting that day before the game, the whole town shuts down. The whole town. They gather in their pubs, in their bars, in their homes, do they feast? Do they laugh? Do they rise up and play? Do they get drunk? We need wisdom, Yisra'ya. We need wisdom of Yah's Torah. We need men to teach us wisdom of His Torah. The whole town shuts down. Nobody does anything. Nobody, all, all the business was the day before. And they're all glued to that. Do they sit there for? It takes about four hours for a college football game, one of that magnitude. Because everybody wants to buy commercial time. They have official time out. They have station times out. They have team times out. So everybody can get a little piece of the pie. And yet you tell me it's not tied up for us to stop our aggressive ways of opposition against Yah. You tell me it's not time out for that. That we become hearers of the word and not only hearers, but we fashion our lives. The word doer is asa. It is to fashion ourselves. We fashion our mind. Yah, he made man. He bara. He created man in his image. He asa. He fashioned man in his image. He fashioned man that way. And for us to oppose what Yah has done, something is sick in us, Yisra'ya. That's why that spirit rises up in our minds. It's not the seventh Rahim of Yah because it speaks of the powerful uh, uh, beauty of Yah, the strength of Yah, that we have the Gaba of Yah. That's what the menorah represents. The seven. Ru'achim, the seven spirits of Yah, found there in Yeshai, Isaiah chapter 11. That's the seven Ru'achim, also in Revelation. Yeshua has the seven kokab in his hand, 
what the Torah says. And out of his mouth went a sharp to add kharab, to kill, to smite down, and listen. See, when one has this power in their loins, it says, and his pawnim. The pawnim represents this space between here and here. We can smile and people, oh, he is so happy. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> But this is the ponim. This is the perfection of one's heart from here to here. And it expresses right across here. That's what he says. Hell, you can look at someone and tell them. I don't need to look at their mouth and they can smile. Oh, thank you. That's phony. Did I hear something? All right. I need that water. I'm hungry too physically. Didn't eat nothing but a little bread yesterday, which just wasn't enough. And I could not eat after I finished last night. I would have been uh, crowing at the, at the moon. True. So I can't eat like that. I'm glad too. Listen to this. He said in his countenance was as the shemesh. I know Brother Ab still knows that the shemesh. His countenance was as the sun. And the word Shemesh. Hear this now. Not only does the word Shemesh, I got something on your son because I search a little deeper than you. Not only does the word Shemesh implies the sun, but it implies this. Openly so the public can actually view it. Do not the public view the sun? Cannot they say, oh, it's a bright, beautiful sound today. Oh, you, I can't look at that. So your face or your ponim is open so the public can view it. Fact of the matter. That is shimash. It indicates that physical body there, but it also indicates uh, the open, publicly inspection of one. You've never inspected someone in public? You go in a place, you say, what a shame. Look at that woman. Look at her youngins. You never done that? Don't you think people looking at you say, look at that man. Look at him. He looks a mess in that. So if you do that, you think that it's improper for someone to say, look at her. Look at him. Look at her. She looks mean. Why? Because from here to right here. I don't give a damn if you got a million dollars smile. It means nothing. It's the pony. It doesn't mean a damn thing. There are folks smile and kill somebody. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy killing you. <laughs> Get on your knees. <laughs> and then with the matter series, you can see from here to there. You're not looking at the mouth from here to there. Between those eyes, you see the death. I've heard people say that I looked in his eyes and they were so cold, the coldest eyes I've ever seen. You never heard anyone say that? So you can look in one's eyes. The iron is the inlet to one's heart. You can see the damn corruption. I don't care how we try to play it off. You can see what dwells in that temple. He shall sit himself in the place in the Leba. Who would exalt himself that he is called the mighty one. I don't care what nobody say about me. No, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to present an image that even though they said let it be. But if you just walk right as the old folks say, you just do right. You don't have to worry about those words. Just like I've let those that have left here, they put things up on our YouTube channel. The only thing I have to do is delete it, but I leave it there. A man wrote me recently and said, I know, I've been looking for seven years. I found the man. I found you. I found you. And so there was something that struck me 64 head of the head of there. Not this recently now. Chuck me. You know him. Chuck me. Chuck me. Now this is the same man that said I, I found a message of truth. This Jezebel woman that calls herself a pastor wrote me the other day and said, we need men like you. There, you, you. You're the only one I found that's declaring this truth the way you do it. Then she asked me a question. And so I answered her question with scripture. When it has more meaning to that, uh, I, I told her, because the question she asked, I say, because she thinks she's a pastor, 
And she may be that, but she's not uh, uh, the Riach spirit of Yah. I say, you can see that the problem is you don't know as much as you think you know. And I wrote in that bold capital letter, don't, don't inject into what I'm saying. Don't let your emotions get in the way. You don't know the heifer. She let her emotions get in the way. She writes me back with this scaling, uh, uh, scaling letter. You don't know anything. Hell, you just wrote me. I said, read the letter you just wrote to me. I said, it would behoove you to read that. And then I said, you are sad. I told her, you're a sad thing. So she writes me back. Delete that. I don't waste my time with that. I deleted it. Hallelujah. Your shoe is the same today. Yesterday. Forevermore. And his testimony is more real in me now than it was uh, 33 years ago. How about that? All right, 34 years ago to be precisely, over 34 years ago. It's more real now than it was then. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. That's a fact. And in all my ignorance trying to preach some 33 plus years, I was stupid. Yeah, he has granted me a simple truth. Listen, it is one thing that Yah will do, Yisrael, Yah, his countenance or his, the, his face shine as though that uh, it shone as the sun in his strength. Who can look at the sun in his in this strength? Nobody. That's why you don't want the strength of Yah's word to identify your wickedness. It is one thing that when Yah removes his presence from uh, anything, it's going to be revealed in one's countenance. We remove his presence. We remove your sure the power of the word. He sits his sword at the door. Not only does it imply the word of Yah, but it means the, the tool of smiting. To kill, to break down, to destroy, to slaughter, to smite. You cannot oppose Yah as we allow this temple to be erected in our minds to oppose Yah. We reject Torah. And once you reject Torah, He rejects you. Look at this in the book of Bereshit. Yah is going to guard His heritage. You that are pure in your sight, that you are tahor, clean and pure. He's not going to let corruption reside in your body, in your mind. How do I know? Look at this here in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. It says, when they sinned against Yah, that he drove, he used the word garash, he divorced them. He drove them out or he thrust out Adam and he placed a cherub, one that guards, at the east garden of Eden, the place of pleasure. Where does the Melach of Yah encamp about? He encamp about those that fear Yah, doesn't he? The pattern is already established, Yisrael. The pattern is already established. Uh, and the milak of your God's Yisraya to guard from the encroachments of hell. Uh, he's going to save the remnant. Uh, and the encroachment of hell, uh, you will not. He will reprove us. Uh, he is the messenger of Yah. And the messenger of Yah will speak uh, on our behalf, on our condition. And show us what we need to get healed. Yeah. Isn't that why you go to a doctor? Doesn't the doctor tell you what it's going to take? Yahshua is my doctor. And sin is my handicap. I don't know about you, but that's my handicap. I'd rather have him than silver or gold. You all sing that song, but sing it more robust. I'd rather have Yahshua than silver or gold. I'd rather have Yahshua then all the riches on tour. Oh, I rather, oh, I rather. Come on. I don't need no liberty. I have liberty in Him. Why? Because things I used to do, I don't do. The way I walked, I don't walk that way. He set a kerab, a guarding melak, at the east of the garden. Hallelujah. At the place of it and the place of pleasure. It is says he had a lahat, a sword of fire, a flaming sword. The word of Yah, it is a consuming fire. Yeremiah says so consuming that it consumes me. 
It's like fire shut up in my bones. He said a lahat, one that had a flaming sword. And there is no sword that flames like the word of Yah. You gotta have to fight against that spirit with the with, with the with the spirit of the mouth of Yahshua Hamashiach. That's the word of Yah. That's the only way you gotta fight against that. You're not going to get rid of that power. That spirit is going to dwell. You're not going to get rid of it by murmuring. You bring in the gods. You bring in the demons. You bring in the powers of hell. That's why when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, the demon looks, comes back to the place, and he finds it swept and all clean. But it doesn't have the seven ruchim of Yah. It doesn't have the ruach of Yah. And he goes and it takes seven demons more wicked than that spirit. You can't have the Ruach of Yah and do what you were doing yesterday. You cannot have the Ruach of Yah and do what you are doing yesterday. Because you're greatly sorrowful for that. You can't have the Ruach of Yah and offering up offerings unto demons of hell uh, to that which sits in the place of Yah. This is where Yah, when he breathed into man, he put the life of his mind into man. How do you know that? Because uh, he spoke the name. You think that man just conjured up some words. Uh, oh, that's an Ezrek. That's an Ezrek. That's a tree. You think he came up with that? That's a Yah. That's a river. Nah. He spoke from Yah's mind. He spoke from the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Is Yahshua the word? Did man when Adam speak? Did he speak the word? He spoke from that mind. He spoke from that authority. And he placed every name that was proper in the mind of Yah according to everything. That's the knowledge of Yah. That's the power of his word. When he said, Ezra, that, that tree was, Woo! Yes, sir, that's in the presence of Yah. He said, that's in hell. The mountain shouted before Yah. We are damn dumb people. These people are we're ignorant. We're stupefied. We think we're smart. We think we're bright. This is simple. It's so simple that our bright minds miss it. We we'll give a damn if you can do algebra. It means nothing to you. I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he had seven stars. Shabba. Seven stars in his hands. Which represents the seven Rachim. The seven spirits of Yah. I know what fear is. You young men that desire wise, you hear, you that are listening. Above all, you get the fear of Yah, and you. he'll give you an excellent wife. Don't, don't, get, don't get disturbed. You like, you're not lacking anything. He's going to restore unto you. He will not withhold any tough thing from you. You walk upright. He gets your wife. You want a wife. You don't want a bad thing. You can go there today and carouse all you want to. Get all you want to. From every color of the rainbow, you can get it. From every color of the rainbow. You can get it. You can get them Caucasian. And I don't give a damn if your skin is black as tar. Asian. Mexican. That's the truth. And hell, those wicked women won't give you hell. They won't give you hell. That's why there are many men of the diaspora who say, we don't want a woman of the diaspora. They go to other women because if they don't raise hell like them, that's a lie. That's a flat out lie. They ask you where you're going, you, you want to hang, you can go hang. But the women of the diaspora, they're mean as hell. And this is the concept because mothers have taught their sons that. They have railed against their husband, they have spoken against their husband, even with their children, their sons and their daughters. Can I use an example one day? He said something to me one day, I said, boy, I will crack. I didn't say his butt up. I don't want to say the word us. But I said it. All you know is what your mother put in you. You don't know a damn thing. I use me all the time. I can use him. I said, you don't know a damn thing. You don't know what happened. 
she have infused that in you. And all of a sudden, he began to remember things. He said, you know, Rayak, when I look back on things, I will watch and see how things were going. It was totally different than what she had, that corruption she had put in me. I said, all right, son. I know it's the truth. And so they're doing that to their sons, that young men today, they have this adverse attitude toward their fathers. Hell, I wanted a daddy. I wanted a daddy bad. Because Andre McCarroll had a daddy. We went to school. What's your daddy? I don't have no daddy. Eric Harris had a daddy. Come on. I have no daddy. And so they have adversely affected their sons and their daughters. So their daughters don't know what to look for in a beautiful man. And it's the truth. Because they learned from their mother. And they didn't see the strength of the power of a man from their father. Because they held the mother dominated. I went to the man's house one day and I said to you, I went to his house twice. You hear me, young man? I watched this man's wife punk him. He didn't say a thing. I didn't like it. But I just looked at her like this. I look at him, and he was a dismal, effeminate man of a man. So I left. Never said anything. You don't know who I'm talking about. Even if I told you, you wouldn't know. And there was another occasion I went to his house, and I watched this beast this time. She upbraided him in a way that was so disrespectful. And I looked at this beast of a thing. I left the man's house, but I have never, that was nearly 20 years, I've never gone in any of his establishments again, and what not. But a man can't rule his own house, he can't rule the things of Yah. You got to govern your own house by the purpose of Yah. And that's why this beast, this spirit, it is one erecting uh, this place, uh, Yoshua said, this building say it's coming down. He says, uh, he says in three days, uh, he said, I'm going to restore this house, this bayat, uh, this mikdash. He was talking about his body. I say, man, hell, it took our forefathers all this long to build this. Are you talking about that? We ain't buying that. And so the body of the bayat uh, or the mikdash, uh, it is the dwelling place of the power of Yah. Wasn't that what the house was for? Did not his train, did not his smoke fill the temple, the, the house of Yah, did not uh, all uh, of the, the actual pros, procedurals uh, and the processionals uh, was an, an implication of Yah being in the midst. Uh? So he has poured himself in the midst of Yisrael. Yah. He has ignited the testimony of Yeshua. It is the fire of our mouths. All hell can come against me. I got the power of my about death. I will not condense in. I don't love this damn life. I love the life that is in me. The revelation of what I see through the power of this living truth. And because Yeshua lives in you, you live. Because he lives, you live. And because he lives, you can face whatever it is. No weapon that formed against my mind shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up in judgment against me, I'm going to condemn. They're going to be condemned, Yisrael. You're doing right. You're that perfect in your way. You love Yah. I don't give a damn. If I rise up against you in judgment, I'm coming down. You're not right. You're self-righteous. God tells us to mark a perfect man. You mark a perfect Ahot. And you will see the shalom of Yah in her countenance. Her walk is one that is of expression. Walking in my Yashua, walking home. Yes, I am. Oh, I'm walk, walking in Yashua, walking home. Yes, I am. Oh, I'm walking, walking in Yashua. Hey, this is the way I roll, whether I'm working. You see me get out there, I may start off like this, oh man. Then all of a sudden the back straighten up. You never see me riding a cart. I don't ride them. You don't see me riding no bicycle. I don't do it. You can, but not me. 
I'm glad that I can walk. Ours ain't not riding one. You said, you run, get on, man. You just go across the road, I'll meet you there. You want to ride? I don't even answer, I keep walking. Because he knows. I give you a ride of that. Get out of my face, man. I'm glad I can walk. Oh, no, ride from, from there? Get away from me. You go over there and you wait for me. I'll be there. It won't, be, it won't take me long. By the time you get there, I'll be there. Hallelujah. I want to walk this walk, not just talk it. I want to get to a point today because uh, we're going to explore this in the next week or so to come, all right? I want to show us something. Our body, our betten, our betten, the seat of our hunger, our passion. When you got a seat of hunger and a passion for whatever it is, I don't even give the world, you see the, the, the aggressive nature for that. If there's a seat in you, a law for Yisrael, yeah, everyone will see it. I was saying to one the other day how my Akshimri, he's a very perceptive individual. He is very perceptive. He said, watch that. Just watch, Ria. Look at them. He watches things. He sees quite clearly. He said, watch it. He said, we go back tomorrow. I want you to watch that. I want you to just watch. Watch. Just how he said it. Happened just like that. Very perceptive. He is. He watches things. Look at that. You see that? Isn't that what Israel needs? Seers? There were seers among them, were there not? We don't know the book. We just don't know it. Raise up the Nabi. Yeah. Raise up the true messengers among us. Hallelujah. Can I proceed a little further? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what Yah does here in Bereshit, He guards His heritage. Are we the heritage of Yah? So if this Yoshua out of His mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword, uh, then the defense of our minds is the power of the sharp two-edged sword. Isn't it? Uh? He shall fight against this beast. Uh, with the words, with the words that proceed out of his faith, his mouth, and the words that come forth there as a sharp two-edged sword. Word of Yah, it is powerful, it's quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. Is it not? That's the Torah of Yah. Hallelujah. He tells us here in Revelation chapter 2, he gives us warning today, Yisrael, I'm telling you, Revelation, Gilyana chapter 2. He speaks here unto the house of Pergamos. When we define the word Pergamos, uh, it means height or elevation. Do we not elevate ourselves? We elevate ourselves, don't we? We think more highly of ourselves than we do Yisrael, don't we? We don't think that our sins are like his sin or her sins, do we? We don't think that they're nice as us, do we? I'm nice to everybody. Nobody's nice to me. You are a stupid jackass. Everybody's mean to me. No, hell no. You're mean to everybody. Everybody's not mean to me. Your whole is not mean to me. She may be mean to me, but that doesn't indict her. She's not mean to me. That old woman back there's not mean to me. Come on, my ach, you'll see. He's not mean to me. No, you're just mean. It is the guilt of your own wickedness. You're trying to plot to everyone else. That's all it is. It's like a woman that had a bad experience with a man. They, they ain't no quote. They say like, there ain't no good man. How you know, Heifer? How many have you had? You had one of you characterize all men like that? How do you know? Have you slept with every man, you Jezebel? You haven't slept with me. So you don't know the man I am. So is this vindictive venom of a poison and they don't even look beautiful because uh, this poison of this asp is in them and they don't look beautiful so everyone is like that that's not so that's not so look here i said that's more than one thing i don't care how men do me i'm not going to judge another man like that 
That's what they said. He loved me so much. I didn't say it to anyone with my issue. I said, baby, that's Ricky B three times over. I didn't tell nobody that. I didn't even tell my partner. I didn't tell this woman. I told not him later on. But I, didn't, I did not say, I knew it wasn't going nowhere. I said, that's Ricky B three times over. But I said this, but I'm not going to judge him that way. I will walk with him and do right by him. I swear I am. And he was Ricky B three times over. You understand? Can't go around. Or oh, even Mr. say these men don't realize when they come here, they're going to they're gonna find a warrior. Old woman watch things too. When they sure tell me something she said, I said, she said, the old woman said that? Hmm. Can't go around the Torah of Yah. You cannot get around. Torah of Yah. It is the, it is the pausing of our own hearts. So he writes to Pergabas that this exalted, extreme, elevated mind, that is what this beast does. Did not Nakash the serpent elevate the mind of Hava over the very Torah of Yah? See, the day you defy him. Yah says, don't eat from this tree. The day you eat from that tree, you're going to die. And they died. The sin in us today is the repercussion of what they did. And mamas and daddies, you don't realize what you pass on to your sons and your daughters, your grandbabies, your grandyoungers, and even those that you embrace. You don't realize that. That's why the Torah tells us to lay hands suddenly on no man. I just don't lay hands on any man. I don't do it. I don't embrace just any man because he's, hey, preacher, nah. I give him that, bam. I don't lay hands suddenly on no man. And women, I don't do that. If I'm with this ark or this ark, this ark, this, it, I can't see an enhancement in their lives, then I'm not, I'm not, I shouldn't even be with him. If I don't see some improvement in him, if I'm not there to strengthen him, he has a battle. And as old folks say, y'all say, knows I don't want nothing to happen. To strengthen, call him at times on his job, say, how you doing, man? Am I not my brother's keeper? I see the agony come here, man. We both smell like bullhogs, sweaty as they come. Give me some, man. Come on. And just stand there and hold each other. Come on, man. Give me some. We don't have to talk. I don't talk to him. I don't do that. Just that. When he feels that, he feels that heart. He knows it's real. Not these loquacious beasts. You can go through, brother man, brother man, don't worry about it, brother man, you know, brother man, the loud said this, brother man, the loud said, they don't have a damn thing. A man's action speaks louder than his words. Nothing of the hold, hold that. We like to challenge the messenger of Yah, Yah just prompt me to read this. Hallelujah. When I said that you can look at individuals and watch them and tell their beauty, can you not? Can you all turn quickly to Proverbs quickly? And I want to get back to this. I want to inject a few things before I close the day, all right? It says in Proverbs chapter 31. This is the assembly here. This is the house. This is the mind. And that is what this woman represents, the words of Lemuel, which is the is name of uh, Shulomo, his mother writes to him. Um, it talks about the strength of this woman. We are the woman of Yeshua. It says in verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing. You can tell a strong woman when you see her and the beautiful strong woman. Uh, sure you can, Yisrael. Street and honor, uh, uh, they are on her. She rejoiced in time to come. Uh, that's the beauty of, uh, of the assembly. And that's why when a man finds a wife, he finds a virtue. Who can find a virtuous wife? He's shown us the aspects of that. Uh, we have not allowed this thing to enter into our mind. Uh, that we oppose Yahshua. 
Strength and honoring are our clothing. That's her clothing. She rejoiced in time to come. When you find a beautiful a hope of Israel, she rejoiced, even in hard times, even in her affliction and her trial, because she knows uh, that there, these light afflictions are, are but uh, they're light afflictions, uh, but there's a greater reward that we should receive at the coming of Yeshua. You understand? She's a praying woman. She gets on her knees, even in the midst of her great agony, she prays. She gets on her knees. She cries out. I wish I had that like my age, Sean, 3.30 in the morning. But she's on her knees. Seems like a half an hour she's there. I'm not saying that to boast. Now, that doesn't mean a damn thing. She can get there all she wants to uh, if her heart is not sincere. I wish I had that. I don't do it that way. And he talks to me and I talk with him. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Anytime she says something, is wise. She does the mind of Yah. He sits in the temple and exalts himself. So when a woman exalts, when she speaks, when she opens her mouth with the hukha of Yah, it is the strength of an experience with a husband man. It is the strength of the experience with a husband man. How do I know? I will show you. And her tongue is the law of kindness. You tell me your tongue. That's a, that's a pure, that's a virtuous woman. That's a high yield woman. She's a woman of strength. Her tongue is the law of kindness. She's not murmuring and complaining. We're the woman of your sure. Why should we be murmuring? I bless Yah for giving me one more day. Yes, do. I to to the Yah for one more day. I'm a lion. Oh, I think my upbound. Oh, I am a lion. Oh, I to the yeah, for one more day. You know, my Eva, I look for her at times. I look to make sure she's walking. I say, I, I didn't. Okay. Then all of a sudden, I may see this silhouette. I say, ah, she's walking. It says, out of her mouth is the law of kindness. That's a woman of strength. One that has no strength and don't know how to speak kindness. They don't care how they speak. Out of her mouth is a law of kindness. Is the law of kindness. She looked well to the way of her household. Are we not the house of Yisrael? You should look well to the household of Yisrael. She eateth not the bread of idleness. She doesn't sit around laughing and clowning like a jackass. She's not sitting around worrying about frying some fat, fat back chips or pork rinds. She's not sitting back looking for that. She's not look, sitting back looking how she feeds her belly. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also prays her woman. We are the woman of Yisra. Yeah, we are the house. We are the assembly. Yah praises us when we brach him. And when a woman blesses a man, she will bless her. I don't give a damn what you say. You don't do it as some kind of form of formalism or, or ritual. When you show no bless, when you brach that man, you bow down. Give me your feet, baby. Give me your hands. Let me massage them. I don't care how my hands feel. I can sense how you feel. Let me massage you. Oh, that's enough. No, I'll massage you some more. Just let me put some oil on them. Let me just massage you. My heart aches because I know you're not pretending with me on that. Let me ache them. I'll massage you. Oh, that's enough react. No. You see the completion of this one this year? We can allow that spirit to reside in us. We can allow this nakash, the serpent spirit, to make us oppose Yah. She looks well to the house of Yisra'ya. Who are her children? Yoshua clarified that. Who is my brother? Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my house? They that hear the word of Yah and do the will of Yah, the same as my mother, same as my Ak. It was five men in my family and one girl. You tell me we didn't raise hell? Sure we did, but we still brothers. I seen brothers throw down, locked out, but don't you mess with that. Stay away from that. We may have opposition, but we, when it came time to hook up, 
We hooked up. Got mad at each other. We didn't hold that against our brother. I didn't hold that against my brother. He owed me 25. Man, where my mother? I didn't, didn't make me no different. I didn't do that. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. Baby boy, let me borrow 20. I'll pay you back when. You know, I give your money back, but you know, you give me 20. If you got 20 to spare, you know you're going to give it to him. You knew you weren't getting it back. I knew that. Baby brother, where's my money? Baby boy, I said I'd pay you. I didn't say when. Baby boy, let me hit you up for 10. Boy, you owe me 20. I know I owe you 20. That's why I asked you for 10. Here it is, baby boy. Here it is. Don't forget I'm the big brother. You're the baby brother. So although we got upset with each other, we did not hold that in our bosom against each other. We did not hold no animosity. You are sick in your damn mind anytime you do that. I mean, those that hear that, they do still do that. He said that. This freak, this faggot writing, well, he did that. That was 15 years ago. You remember that? Wow. You are sick and childish. I can't remember what I did two weeks ago. I can't tell you what I did. You know that's wicked when you can remember something 10 years ago. You are sick in your damn mind. Can I read a little farther? And I want to close with the important point because I want, to, I want you to hear this and I want to continue with him from next week. It said, her children arise up and they call her blessed and her husband also praise her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but you excel them all. This is what I want you to hear right here. It says, uh, uh, it says in verse 23, you don't realize the beauty of what we, it's, y'all, y'all said that he was, he was scattered throughout the nation, did he not? And we will be a blessing to all the nations. Look what it says in verse 23. Her husband, her ish, her husband is known in the gate when he sits among the elder. Her husband, why? Because they know this beautiful woman. They know her beauty, her strength. And because of her beauty, I would say to him, believe me, cats, his boys, they say, man, you, boy, that, that woman of yours, boy, she, she's right. Yeah, they would say that. He can't tell me they didn't say it. She's right. Man, you got it going on, player. See, even she made a statement for him among wicked men. Men didn't even know you. That's the beauty and the strength of a woman. When a young man sees that, he will know like, oh, boy, he, that man right there, he has a beauty in his strength because, oh, I see why. And the strength of Yahshua's power and testimony is in his woman, in us. Yes, in us, yes, Raya. We cannot allow this nakash, this rising of this bewitching, this power to promote self and one's own emotions and one's uh, uh, feelings. We cannot allow that. And we are allowing that, yes, Raya. That's why folks go get you some guns. Mom is Antichrist. But hell, we've had many Antichrists. I don't mind the Antichrist. I like them. I'm Antichrist. Damn Christ. I'm at, I am totally anti-Christ. I'm not anti-Hamashiach. Damn Jesus and damn the Christ. I am anti-Christ. I'm anti. If you all want, let everyone know the video. Reach thy wheat. He is the anti-Christ. You call Reagan. You've called Obama. You've called Carter. You've called Napoleon. The Pope. All of them are dead. <laughs> Here he is right here. I am anti-Christ. Damn Christ. I am anti-Christ. You're looking at him. How about that? I'm not anti-Hamashiach. I won't say that. You can be a Christ and anointed by anything, but he was anointed by Yah. The oil of Yah was smeared upon him. Hallelujah. So we must be, we must have this, this opposition to the kingdom of hell that shall rise up. It rises up through the sea of our problem, our sea of our circumstances. 
of the multitudes of agony we have in our bodies, the things that we have allowed to be stored in our minds. We're dealing with a concept and a mind disorder and a mind control. Not some damn chip in your hand. Already got the chip in your brain. What do you need a chip in your hand for? Already got the chip in your brain. Your brain is ran by chip, cell phone chips, YouTube chip, telephone chip, everything chip, everything chip, 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 chip. potato chips, chocolate chips. Chicken chips, fish chips. So when we as the bride of the bridegroom, they would say, look at that woman. Look at those people. Look at them. Look at Yisra'ya. That should be the statement. I want to f- read a couple of things and I'm going to close here. But look here again in, in Gilyana to the house of Pergamos, Revelation 2.16. This is how Yah is going to fight against you, Yisra'ya. And I will show us in the time to come. We're talking about a kingdom. We're talking about an oath or a mark in the mind of people. And that mark opposes Torah, any kind of Muzah. And the Ruach of counsel shall rest upon him. Do your research. You will see that that word is Muzah. Muzah. It means to uh, discipline, to rebuke, to reprove, to repudiate, uh, to correct. That's what counsel is. That's what counsel is. That's what psychiatrists uh, and the psychologists, as they try to rectify the matter that's in your mind, uh, psychologists try to find out the problem, how it derived. So how do they do that? They begin to ask you questions, don't they? Do they not search your answers? So Yah is questioning our hearts today and show us the vileness in us. Uh, we better get it right. Yeah. So he says repent. Revelation 2.16. He, he's given us a chance to repent. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. I have, really haven't read these verses. He said repent. Shub. Repent. Or else I will come to you quickly. And Yah says, I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. You're not going to fight against this kingdom of darkness without the sword, without the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he set a kerub at the entrance of the gate of, to, the, of, to the garden of Adon, the garden of pleasure. He said that this one, uh, we talked about the one of perdition. Uh, this is one that is of a uh, harem. Was not your Yahuri's carrier? Uh, was he not the son of perdition? Uh, did he not die in the others of his darkness and sin? Uh, did he walk with Yahshua? Did he pretend? Did he not kiss him? You kiss your ark, you kiss your halter, uh, and you have a spirit, that kingdom you've allowed, that temple to be built. You're exalting yourself uh, that you're the prima donna. I'm special. You're not special. We're the same. Yeah. Which part of your body you don't like? It may be ugly, but I like all of mine. It may be fat, but I still like it. it may be unattractive, but I still like it. I'm not going to cut it off. I'm not going to do that. What childish mentality we have today. I see why young men today can't find wives because all the women don't know how to teach the young ones the beauty of a wife. They don't know how to teach them. And we, as the bride of Yahshua, we don't know how to teach the young ones the beauty of processional procedures before young. It's sad. The women don't know how to teach the young women. The men don't know how to teach the men. It is sad. Sit down and eat some fried chitlins. We can do that well. We can talk about some of the most unclean things that have no relevance. 
We love the God of our belly. We love feet. We love to eat now. Forgive me, y'all, but I, man, I said I was hungry because I'm, it's nearly two o'clock. I'm hungry. Let it eat. I'm all right, though. I go the rest of the day. I'm fine. That thing, I said to Akshimri, I discipline myself to do certain things. I do this now for this period. Then if I do this, then I will make sure that I do the things that are extreme to make sure that I satisfy that. I said to my Isha this morning, this is my schedule. This is what I began to do. We began to do this. I want to live. I want to be healthy. I want the word of Yah to heal me, to be my Rafa. For me to live as Yahshua, for me to die as gain. I have nothing to live for but Him. Nothing. As I said to you all, I have no heritage. I have no children. Once I'm gone, no, no son will cry. She's gone. She has no daughter to say, I I'll take her clothes. And, Mama, I love you. She has none. I'm not sad for me. I may be sad for her at times. I'm not sad for me. I'm all right. I am. I truly am. I see some of this hell mess that parents have produced. I don't want that. I'm all right. She'll be all right. You may take us together. You, we're getting older, so we need each other. And she need me to lean on me when she gets up, she's walking like that. Yeah. You all right, baby? I feel right. This breaks my heart, man, but she, she still gets going, man. She, that's how she walking. Never heard her complain. I'm mad at myself. I wish I did. I've never heard her say that. Never. No, I don't understand how I hurt. I've never heard her say that. And she'll, she'll, she'll get going and say, baby, you all right? It hurts me. I say, y'all, sometimes I get mad at myself. I say, well, what if we had done that? Maybe she would not. He hurts back then. He still can't even get on his knees. She can get on her knees. I see the pain. I do. That affects everything. It affects your whole body. So I want to stay alive so I can bathe her. I won't put that responsibility on any of you. I'll bathe her if it comes to that. Nah. You may get frustrated with it. I won't. Cannot go around. You'll be all right. You have sons, daughters. Look at that one. See that? Grandbaby there. I'm going to close with this and then we're going to continue from here. It's the same subject. Hallelujah. He said, He's going to come against you with the word of your mouth. He wants you to repent. The only way that that Nekash is going to be destroyed, this beast, the spirit. Out of you, Yisraya. And I want to get into the depths of that next week. I got one, two, three, four, five more pages. And I want to stop at this point. It's continuing, Akmikaya. I'm continuing in the path now. You got to sometime top loose ends, all right? It says here, the last verse in Revelation chapter 19. And this is where we began. On next, Jubat. This is this profound revelation, call it vision, of the might of Yah in Yahshua. That he goes forth to destroy the armies that are against Yah's kingdom. He must destroy the thoughts of our minds and, and our emotions. Because they are against Almighty Yah. Revelation chapter 19 verse 15. And it shows us what comes out of Yahshua's mouth is feth. And out of his feth goes a sharp herap sword. A tool to smite. When the word of Yah goes out, Yisrael, Yah, it's going to smite you. It's going to kill you. It's going to destroy thy kingdom power 
that you have erected in your mind, a sharp sword that with it is that he shall smite the nations, all nations, not one nations, that's plural. It is not goi, but it is goim, goim. It is the nations. And he shall rule them with an R or iron. iron. He trots the winepress uh, of his fierce uh, Ebra. He fe- he's tread the winepress with the anger of Almighty Yah. Why is that? Because of this Nachash. The nations are they for Yah or against him? The nations with this Bavel, that nation, the mindset is against his people. We know that Bavel means uh, confusion. Although we do not have the physical empire here, we know that there is a Bavel. We know that this Roman entity is one of greed and lust. Consumption cannot have enough. And although the state of that Roman entity is not in the physical, we still have the Roman power in the Lebra of many. We want to override. Yeah, we want, to, we want our light to shine. Now I want the light of Yahshua. No, not this little light of mine. Oh, the light of Yahshua. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, the light of Yahshua. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, the light of Yahshua. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Not this little light. You don't have no damn light. I have the my oh the light that calls you to celebrate. Uh, not just oh there's light out there, but no one is celebrating. I have the my oh the light of the power of Yeshua, and it calls me to celebrate. We'll continue next week. And I take nothing back. Greetings to you all. Greetings to you, my Ak, Charles. And the gathering there in Los Angeles, California. There's a brother there in San Diego. He writes all the time. He says, wait a, he says to me, wait to lay it down, big bro. That's how he talks. He got this kind of street creed in him. He said, he said, you know, I've been looking for that message. And big bro, wait to lay it down. That's how he talks to me. And he lives in San Diego. So I had to, t- I says to him, Coming to L.A. Cali, 2013. I'm looking for you too. Force. He called himself the force. All right. You see what kind of force you got. All right, the force. You're listening. Coming to L.A. You're coming to knock that angel to hell. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I ain't taking down. You got the crypts in the blood, but I got the blood of your shoe. How much you have? I got the time of Yahshua. Be the riches of your rest upon you all. We appreciate you gathering with us. The conditions here today, everything is well. Hallelujah. We will inform you of that at a later time. But we are well. Had a wonderful time today, the singing, the preaching. I sometimes can get erratic, but that's all right. I'm not apologizing because. Because Yah must touch us. He must show us. Cry loud and spare not. Show Yahuda their sin. And the house of Yisra Yah their transgressions. We must be shown. Because we can't see what we're doing. We think everyone else is wrong. I'm wrong. He is not wrong. I can always trace things back to me. Because Yah gives me opportunity to do right. So it's not what someone else has done to me. It's me, what I've done to Yah. It's not what she has done to me over 35 plus years with this woman. It's not because I said I've been, that doesn't mean a damn thing because I said I've been faithful. It doesn't mean a damn thing, Yisrael. The men that have fallen, don't they, and they have been more kind to the Israel than I have. So it doesn't mean a damn thing. That's no badge of honor. You think I have the power to resolve to do that? Whether I had done it or not, she still trusts me and have confidence. That's all that matters. 
Let the light of Yeshua, the light of Torah. His Torah is a lamp, right? It's a new, that's what the, huh? Is it not that? Is it light? It's a lamp and it's a light to our pathway. Our halach, the way we walk, we walk in the Torah. So it lights up the way, doesn't it? It's almost like those lights out there when you're coming around. I like that. You don't like that? Looks nice. Wish you had the money to do a whole place like that. You don't have money. Those lights look nice. All those lights probably cost us five dollars a year for all of them. LED will take no energy. Nothing. But it's so nice, isn't it? It looks so nice. I like that. The simplest of things I like. I don't like things that are complicated. I don't like things that cause me to scratch my head. I'm reading the Torah. I want it to be simple. Okay, I want to understand that. Now they explain things. You know, you sin, you sin. Repent. But the spirit of Nakash, we're going to continue that. Nakash, he exalts himself in the mind of man. Exuding himself as though that I am a God. So I am the Most High. He's going to be brought down to hell and we're going to see that all right. I will show us the propensity, the attitude, the spirit, the nature of that. That we can identify what's in you. Yabrak, you all. Yisraya, we pray that Yah grant you a great Jibad. This is all men will know you, my Talmudim, that you have love one toward another. Let us stand to our feet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All that I need yeah. is in your shoe. Huh? We turn to Yerushalayim. Uh -huh. He's satisfieth. Joy he supplieth. Yeah. Life would be worthless without your shoe. Huh? All things in your shoe. Huh? I find in all things we brought you. You're kind to us. Yeah, what are we but wretched things? We have been wreath covered by this flesh that opposes you and exalts itself against you. We ask you to give us strength and forgiveness of our sins, to forgive my ach, my chutz. Above all, forgive me. Uh, my sins against them and Yisraya our sins against you. As I lift my hands, we ask you bestow your mercies and your great kindness upon us in Yeshua's name. Guide us, watch over, heal the afflicted, the sick, and take those safely home that have joined with us and those that are absent. You know, you understand. We pray for them. We pray for your healing power to rest upon us all. Guide us in all things. Help me, Yah, to teach Yisrael, Yah, not just by words, by pattern, example. Bless, Brach, Amen, precious, each of them, Arachot, each of them, Yah, that we're able to assist and help one another. Let not the sun go down upon my wrath, my anger, my Ebra against Yisrael, Yah. Cause your healing power to rest upon us all. Bless all of our babies, our little ones. The one that is in the womb. The one that has been birthed. We ask all this in Yeshua's name. We shall give your name the great praises. As we go from this place, this Shabbat. Do that you for all things for the bread and all your grant to us. In Yeshua's name. With our voices we cry. Hallelujah. 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 Yabra.